We're joined now by Leroy Butler, who's been with us before, and uh, one of the great Packers, former safety, and he does radio out there in Milwaukee as well. Mr. Butler, how are you? Tiki and Tierney, what's happening, man? I'm doing very good, guys. How you guys doing? We have no complaints at all. You ready for your boy to go into the Hall of Fame this weekend? I, I don't. You know, I'm kind of confused. Why? I'm kind of ready to get it over with because you're sick of talking about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but he's your boy, <laughs> man. He's the man. And, other, <laughs> and then the other side of it, it's just remarkable how we have these barbershop conversations about the best quarterback of all time, and his name doesn't come up. So I almost get in a fight with a 68-year-old every every Friday. Yeah, nice. So I'm in between. Why why is he why is he not considered one of the greatest? He had all the records when he retired, even the bad ones. Too erratic. Is that is that why? Is he too erratic? Was he too gunslinger-ish? Well, I don't I don't think they have a problem with that so much. If you look at Terry Bradshaw, uh, uh, Joe Money, Montana, and some of these guys, even Ben Roethlisberger, even. You know, Eli Manning, the multiple championship winners, that's what they talk about in the barbershop. How many championships does he have? And then now I have to fold up into my little fetal position and wait till they get back to the all-time, you know, leader in games. He's never missed a game. And that kind of stuff, that helps my argument. I say, guys, what do you want best? A guy who is in every single game, who's never missed a game, or a guy that won, a, you know, was on some great teams and won multiple championships. Yeah, and yeah. They, again, they won the championship. And it's a frustrating argument, and I've been there as well. We do this a lot with the NBA. You know, when you comprise a list, top ten, top five, all-time yeah, teams, yeah, starting whatever. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of people, the end of the conversation results in the simple, um, you know, anointing of, of championships. And to me, it's it lacks substance and depth. There's so much more that goes into it. And I would put it this way, and you played with him, but I would put it this way for me, viewing Brett from the outside looking in. He, he might be the most flawed in the sense that you know, he had some early demons, the painkillers, which he's been honest about, never afraid to throw into double coverage because he had a rocket, might throw a pick as much as he might throw a 70-yard bomb. But there's one thing that you knew about Brett, and I would love to have played with a guy like this, that you know that you could have beers with him, he's going to have your back, he's just a, a guy's guy, and he's human. Uh, anybody who's trying to put him lower on the quarterback pecking order is unnecessarily kind of going up the wrong tree. He's one of the all-time greats, period. And I think that's the reason why uh, I used to tell people all the time, every time I looked to my left, if I saw Reggie White getting dressed, I knew we had a chance to win. <laughs> if I looked to my right and saw number four getting dressed, I knew we were going to win. That's a, a lot of guys can't say they play with people like that. And I think one of the biggest things about Brett Favre I talk about as a defender now, as a defender, because I was there in 92 when he first got there from Atlanta, and he didn't know what to expect. But it, was, it was Don McCalkey's team in practice. He throws an interception. He's kicking dirt. He's looking down. I went over to him. I said, Brett, you got to understand something. That's part of the game. Don't you change the way you play. Because we had this West Coast style stuff, and Tiki knows this. Yep. It's just, you know, dink and dunk. They never go downfield. Jerry Rice catches a curl route, runs it 80. Well, Brett wanted to throw it 80. <laughs> I said, if, you can, if you throw interceptions, don't worry about it. It's our job as a defense yep. to go and get it back. That's play and we're okay with it that's good Leroy Butler with us here on Tiki and Tierney CBS Sports Radio former Packer great played with Brett Brett's getting enshrined this weekend in Canton Ohio and of course uh Mr. Butler's still doing some radio out there in Milwaukee so he knows what's going on yeah you're tight with the current uh quarterback in the quarterback situation uh -oh. in Green uh -oh. Bay. Man, what, what is uh -oh. gossip time how should we look at Aaron Rodgers right now because we started to see some of his former mm. guys you know Greg Jennings and uh, and Butler, I mean, uh, not Butler, Donald Driver, saying, you know, yep. sometimes he's not that great of a leader. He's kind of a me guy. And if he makes a mistake, it's your fault. Well, what should we think about Aaron Rodgers, especially coming off the season that he had last year, which was atrocious by his own standards? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's fair. I, mean, I think it's fair because, remember now, for the last 25 or so years, if you're a Packer fan, you only had two quarterbacks. So we just talked about Brett, how much – 
people revere him and want to be like him. And he lets you into his world. I mean, he wears the flannel shirt to the black tie events. I mean, <laughs> you know, if he combs his hair, it's a plus. I mean, don't be, I just want my presence. Well, Aaron is a little bit more guarded. So the Packers fan with Aaron is about just on the field. You know, on the field, he's been remarkable. Off the field, and even his brother, I think, kind of pulled a curtain back about the relationship with his family. Aaron just wants to keep it professional and keep it moving. You know, I'm a great quarterback. I didn't have the year I wanted to have. But for the most part, since I've been under the center, we've been relevant. Mm-hmm. So for the most part, the first three years, I gave him a pass because he didn't play that much. So he's really a 29-year-old quarterback instead of 32. Now, that's my Florida State math. I hope that's correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, you know, and, 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 and by the way, if it's not, they'll push you through anyway. You'll still be eligible. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, bingo. I mean, I like you. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> we keep it so loose here. Is, yeah. Aaron, Aaron, you know, is really feeling some of the uh, Brett Favre pressure of Brett Favre going into the Hall of Fame again, what kind of quarterback he was off the field. And people, they're thinking Aaron was going to be like Brett, but they're totally different. Aaron has an A-list Hollywood you know, girlfriend. Brett had a wife who's going to induct him into the Hall of Fame. I think only two wives have ever done that, mm. who's been with him since he was 16 years old. Yeah. That's Wisconsin. Yeah. So yeah. people don't really get into all that Hollywood. We don't even have TMZ in Wisconsin. Guys. <laughs> we don't allow that. Yeah, I hear so, you. And I think that's a good thing. That is pretty. Listen, that's not a bad thing. Put it that way. Leroy, Leroy you Butler. Right. You know, Leroy <laughs> Butler with us here on Tiki and let, let me put it this way, because I think the answer is going to be fascinating to really paint the very vivid picture of the mindset of Packer fans. The guy who's 50 or 60, slinging back beers on a Sunday, tailgating, that guy's forever a Favre guy. It's indisputable. It's, it's, it's his guy. The guy who's eight, or the kid who's 18 or 19 or 17, probably more a Rodgers guy. The fans who called up radio 30 years old, who saw both, fan, both players in their prime, is it overwhelmingly in favor of Brett Favre? What's that dynamic, the middle portion of Packer fans? You know, we had this discussion the other day. Um, I have two neighbors. One is 74 and one of them is uh, 72. And we do these walks. We call it walks or coffee. And the first thing we talk about, because these guys saw Bart Starr. So they say, and I tell these guys all the time, Bart Starr is the universe, okay? These other quarterbacks are planet. Okay? <laughs> so where would you put Brett Favre and Aaron in their prime? And one of the young men said, hey, listen. I knew Brett, I can think about Brett Favre, the six interceptions against St. Louis. I get that. But I also think about the game he had when his father died. Raiders. I couldn't have played in that game. Yep. I, could, I couldn't have played that game emotionally. The other young man said, well, you know what? Aaron Rodgers, has had, no quarterback had to go so much scrutiny to have a chance. I mean, from day one he got there, people hoped he failed because they loved Brett Favre so much. I guess it was a little bit different like in San Francisco with Steve Young and Joe Montana. It's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Aaron has taken this Packer nation, put it on his back, and he has excelled. He's made them relevant for the next last for the last eight to nine years and made them a dominant figure and probably arguably at times the number one quarterback. So you have to give him credit for that. But if you take a guy in his prime, I think most people would take Brett Favre because the guy was never scared to take a chance. And when you have the number one defense, go ahead and take a couple chances. Interesting. Really good conversation. Enjoy the uh, the weekend. I know we'll be chatting again. Leroy Butler, former Packer great. Well, always a Packer great. Uh, nice chat, buddy. We'll hit up soon, okay? You guys want a few radio stations in the world that can call me at zero notice, and I'll jump on with you. Ah, my man. That. Look at my man Butler. Yeah, Very nice. That, Leroy. <laughs> Atta boy. Just three black guys just shooting the breeze here, Leroy. <laughs> Nothing, you know what I mean? Uh, he's from Brooklyn, but he's got the wrong complexion. <laughs> we'll see you later, man. Thank you very much.